Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I wanted to come on here with some tea. So as you guys know, the other day I had reported on Casanova. Basically, the New York feds, honey, took the social media and they basically added the internet and said, hey, if you guys have seen Casanova, let him know he's under federal indictment. We need to talk to him. So if you guys don't know what's going on, basically him and 17 other suspects allegedly played a role in a lot of gang activities. Um, the gang is the Gorilla Stones. They're a part of the Bloods. And they were involved in a lot of robberies and shootings and scams and all types of stuff, honey. So basically what went down today is that Casanova has just turned himself in as of an hour ago. And if you guys do not know, Casanova is a part of Jay-Z's Rock Nation um, so it's going to be very interesting to see if Rock Nation is able to get him out of this, if they're willing to help him some way, somehow. But I do want to be clear that it's not being reported that Casanova is not being charged in the September killing of the 15-year-old. Because I know a lot of people were, you know, thinking he was involved with the killing. He was not. But they're saying that despite him not being involved in the murder, he's still facing a life sentence in prison if he's convicted on all these charges. So this is really, really serious. He's expected to appear in court later on today um, with his lawyer. But this situation is really disturbing. Um, they're also getting them for stolen IDs and getting illegal, you know, government benefits like PPP. So it seems like a lot of these PPP loans are getting a lot of folks hemmed up. So, you know, hopefully Casanova will be able to fight these charges if they're not true because he's already done enough time in prison and he was really trying to change his life around. So good luck to him on this case. This whole situation is just very unnerving. You know, and it's really sad that a young child lost their life in all of this. So now moving on to another case that hit the internet yesterday, rapper G Herbo. And if y'all don't know who that is, he is a shy rack. Chicago rapper, and he's also Ari, the girl that I was talking about in my live stream, Ari Fletcher. That is her baby's dad. People were asking me, who is this girl? I thought you were talking about Ariana Grande. Who the hell is Ari Fletcher? <laughs> well, now y'all know that is her baby's daddy. She's basically famous for having his child, okay? She had his kid, and I don't know what it is. It's like these girls have babies with rappers, and they get some type of residual fame off of that. She had his baby, and she was able to create her own brand simply off of that, okay? So that is who Ari is. This is her baby's father. So that's very crazy that she was trending yesterday for some BS, and now he's trending for some BS. So what's going down is this. It's been reported that G. Erbo and his associates perpetuated a massive fraud to go on fancy vacations, fly on private jets, and buy designer puppies. According to a new federal complaint, G. Herbo, along with his music promoter and other members of his crew, allegedly conspired to defraud numerous businesses with stolen credit cards over the course of a four-year period. Keep that in mind, y'all. In documents obtained by TMZ, the Fed claims Herbo specifically conspired to get a private villa in Jamaica back in July 2017 by contacting music promoter Antonio Strong to arrange it and provided a stolen credit card to pay for the incidentals. What's more, the feds allege that the rapper was in cahoots with Strong to use an alias and a stolen credit card to purchase two designer puppies from a luxury pet store. <laughs> Feds allege that other defendants also scored private jets to charter and fly women, private yachts to charter, exotic car rentals, luxury hotels, vacation rental accommodations. Herbo has been charged with one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and two counts of aiding and abetting aggravated identity theft. Antonio was also slapped with several counts, including wire fraud. And was arrested back in September. So at the time that this came out, they were saying that his attorney was saying they had no comment. Um, as we all know, G. Herbo just made the Forbes list. He is considered 30 under 30 in the music category. And um, as of an hour ago, again, like this is all breaking news. He has turned himself in. So this is what's being reported this morning. They're saying that G. Herbo has surrendered to authorities in L.A. And that the federal law enforcement, they confirmed it with TMZ. So this is really disturbing that we have two mainstream rappers that are basically out here. And they're dealing with serious federal cases. Okay. And we're talking about scamming, you know, racketeering, you know, all types of crazy stuff. 
Now, as far as everything goes, this is why I tell people all the time, everything that glitters is not gold. And do not be jealous, envious, or feel no type of way when you see celebrities stunting and fronting on the gram, okay? Because a lot of times, you don't know how they got those gifts that they're flossing, those vacations, and everything else. This man is a well-known rapper. He sold millions of albums. But again, that music doesn't always pay off because it seems like a lot of rappers are having to do extra dirt on the side to maintain a lifestyle that they technically cannot afford. And that's the sad part that they get all this pressure to front and floss. And like I've said, and like I've said before in the past, no other genre gets that much pressure on them to show off diamonds and cars and bitches and all this stuff. It is hip hop. It is the hip hop audience, it is the hip hop culture, it is the hip hop fans, and it's the rappers themselves. They perpetuate the bullshit and then they're forced to live up to the bullshit. You know, and I just think that's sad. And like I always tell you guys, on Instagram and on other social media platforms, all people do is show you a highlight reel of their life. Okay, they're only going to show you the best parts when they're on vacation, when they're running behind bad IG chicks, when they're, you know, flossing diamonds and jumping in and out of foreigns. That's the only time you're going to see them posting. They're not going to post when they're doing bad and they're feeling like crap and they don't know how they're going to pay their bill. So this is really sad. And the fact that several people's identities have been ruined, their credit has been ruined. You know, it's 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 not this is not a victimless crime. These were tied to real people's accounts, real people's names that they burnt through so that so that way they could floss in front on social media. So that is a shame. I also want to point out for y'all who don't know this, a lot of this stuff is very serious and a lot of it is by design. This is why they're now going out their way to charge large groups of men, especially black men, especially men in hip hop. If you guys do not know, since 9-11, gangs have been classified as urban terrorists. A lot of folks don't know that. And you can be held indefinitely or deported as a terrorist. So that's why a lot of times they try and tie these guys as gang members and say, oh, he's a part of this gang or they're a part of that because it'll make their case stronger than if it's just an individual person committing a crime. If we can get you under the gang stature, that's going to be more severe punishment for you. On top of that, also remember, like in Casanova's case, they're hitting him with the RICO charge. And the RICO Act, they're able to hit people like Casanova with the RICO charge because, remember, the RICO Act helps to enhance and bring down those different organizations. They did the same thing with the mafia. They did that with the mafia. That is why I say you have to watch the people that you surround yourself with, the people that you hang with, especially once you're famous because... With things like the RICO Act, just you having an affiliation with certain people can come back to bite you. You know, so that's why even if you took a picture with a bunch of gang members three years ago at a party and now, you know, you're in a better space. Well, if one of those gang members do some serious shit, they can basically tie all you guys to it and say that you guys were all a gang. That's why you have to learn these laws and you have to move differently because a lot of times these rappers get caught up, not necessarily because of what they're doing per se, but because of what people who are associated to them, people from their neighborhood, people from their gang. It's like what they're involved in somehow falls back on the rapper and then the rapper gets more of the you know blame because they're the high profile individual. We don't know the other 17 people that are in the Gorilla Stone gang, but we all know Casanova. So that's usually how it works. Hi, my name is Glenn Obedin. I'm a criminal defense attorney and I specialize in federal criminal defense. And I'd like to talk to you for a few moments about something that a lot of people have heard of but may not understand exactly what it is, and that's the federal RICO statute. Uh, the RICO statute is a, a very effective tool that federal prosecutors use in any cases involving quote-unquote organized crime. And that doesn't simply mean what many people think of traditionally as organized crime, um, meaning the mafia. Uh, the RICO statute is, is very effective in prosecuting gang-related crimes as well. And that's a big topic out here on Long Island. There are a lot of gangs and there's a lot of gang activity. And federal prosecutors have been prosecuting gang members under the RICO statute. If you are connected or have a loved one who is connected to one of the gangs out here on Long Island, you could quite easily find yourself entangled in a federal RICO indictment. Uh, the 
way that a RICO indictment is proven is the government shows that a member of a gang commits a crime to enhance or further their position within the gang. And that simply is enough to prove a RICO statute. So if you are or have a loved one who's associated with a gang, any gang activity that's committed, the government will try and prove that that improves the standing of the defendant within the gang itself, promotes his position within the gang. It doesn't have to be money, and oftentimes it's not monetary. It's simply promoting your position within the gang, and that is enough to entangle you in a RICO statute that could uh, include everything from a conspiracy to commit a robbery to a conspiracy to commit a murder, even if you're not the one who actually committed the crime. So if you have a loved one or you yourself are a member of a gang and uh, you're aware that some other people around you have been arrested and charged in a federal prosecution, it might behoove you to speak with a federal attorney and understand and be able to protect yourself against the possibility of being charged in a RICO indictment. So this is a very serious situation for both of them. But, um, you know, we have to watch our moves and we have to realize that it's okay to live within your means. You know what I'm saying? If that makes me a loser and broke and whatever, I I'll be all of that. It's okay to live within your means. If you have to do all types of dirt, you know what I'm saying, to put on a fake persona for people who really technically don't even care about you, then that says a lot more about yourself and your insecurities. OK, so budget, do what you have to do, do the right thing. You know, what I'm saying because charges like this are no joke. And it's sad to see black men going to jail, getting prison time, getting lengthy sentences under RICO charges, under things that they could have prevented, under things that they could have just kept themselves away from under certain situations. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all this stuff plays out. Like I said, Casanova is with Rock Nation. Who knows if Rock Nation is going to go to bat for him, help him with his legal fees. You know, I don't know. Um, you know, as far as G Herbo, this is going to be very interesting as well. But these charges look like they will stick. You know, unless Rock Nation can perform some miracle, those are really serious charges. You know, unfortunately for G Herbo, these charges will probably stick. Um, there's a lot of evidence. They have text messages. They have DM conversations. They even have it where his co-defendant, took a screenshot of the fake driver's license and sent it to the company. So it's like, you know, they're not playing with this wire fraud, you know, people doing shit on social media, thinking they can get away with it or nobody's going to see it. Anything that you transmit is traceable. So people need to understand that as well. And the sad thing is, you know, G Herbo has been doing a lot in recent times to help out his community. He's hosted all types of food drives, back to school giveaways and things like that. But this is definitely going to overshadow all of that. So once again, it's going to be very interesting to see how all this plays out. But I just want you guys to just be aware, you know, be aware of the people that you associate with. Be aware of the things that you're doing and that you're involving yourself. It might be cool for the time being. All of this happened in 2017. They don't play. Once the feds come for you, like I always tell you, it's like a 98 percent conviction rate and they're going to convict, you know, so and they'll watch you. They'll sit there and watch you, you know, run amok, act the fool, sell drugs, move drugs, do all types of shit. And then when they have enough of a case is when they pounce. So that's why I told people in the summertime, you know, everybody wanted to come at me crazy when I was like, y'all who are messing with that PPE shit and that, you know, that COVID money, leave that shit be. It's temporary. It's not worth it. Oh, you hating? You know, the government takes from us. Okay. Well, now they're cracking down on people, you know, for all types of things. Regular people are getting locked up and going to jail behind this stuff. So it's not worth it. It's a temporary situation and things will eventually get better. But don't put yourself in a worse situation for just temporary pleasure. So anyways, you guys, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on all this craziness that's going on in hip hop. We have Casanova turning himself in because of this indictment from the feds and NY. And then now we have G Herbo turning himself in in L.A. because of indictments as well for scamming. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to share the video. And last but not least, make sure you hit that notification bell. So that we can be down with the what? Notification squad. So I'll talk to you guys later. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces.
Thank you.